Good day to you. It's good to be here as we start, I think, one of the exciting and one of the uh, a kind of a pun. This is one of the better books that I like in the, uh, in the New Testament. And I say that because before we even get started, I want you to realize that that's the key word to this book, better. It's, it's better. This is a book that we call the, the Hebrews because it was written, it was written to the, the Hebrew people. It was written to the Hebrew people we know of and a lot of time people don't understand that. The Hebrews, the Israelites, and the Jews was all the same people. But the Hebrew was the oldest name of those people. Abraham was first called a, a Hebrew. It was the language, it was what anybody that was, basically they realized the Hebrew was the old name for God's people. The first one chosen to bring about the promise, the first one that we can see that it says through, you know, a man that through your seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. That was to not an Israel, not a Jew, but to a Hebrew. So here it uses this term. Now, why is this book written to the Hebrews? Well, basically for a reason. Now, I told you, I think we talked about James before. James was a book that was written basically to Hebrews also because it was the first book written. It was written when they, they was first scattered abroad. And James, the other apostles, the people was going places, they was leaving, but the, remember that the apostles stayed there in Jerusalem. James was written to encourage the Christians that had just been converted on the day of Pentecost and shortly thereafter. So it was, the church at that time was 95% Jews, <laughs> and the others was basically those that was proselytes that came in. But then Hebrews was written, I would uh, probably at the second generation of Christians, not in, you know, not in, in the 30s, but this most people think was written probably just before the destruction of Jerusalem probably in the, the late 60s, if that makes sense. So we can see that it had been 30 some years. And I tell you this, 30 some years back in the first century time, the average man lived to 40. So we, we are talking about that was a generation in time. It was written to the Hebrews because they was, I would say in a dilemma. Some in this book say that the book was written to the Hebrews, Christians in Jerusalem. Because in Jerusalem, the church was growing. We know in 70 AD by Josephus, a, a, a historian, not a Christian, but he said that when, when, when it was destroyed, that half of the city was Christians. Half the people had been converted again to Christianity. Well, but they was going to be persecuted and they was being persecuted by those in charge, the high priest and others, because they looked at them as being heretics. Some have said this was written to those Jewish Christians to not go back into their father's religion and realize their father's religion was to lead, it, lead them to their religion today. Now there's another thought and I think both thoughts may be true. Some think that this book was written to the Jewish Christians that was in Rome. Somebody said, why? Because at about this time there was going to come, there was the beginning of a, a new, what is Nero, Nero was coming to power. And Nero was coming to power and he was going to blame Christians for everything that he did that was wrong, the burning of Rome. Who did it? The Christians. Notice he did not say the Jews. Why? In the Roman government, the Jews were as a recognized religion. They had their temples, they had their temples, their synagogues. They was registered by the government. 
they even gave money to the government because they was a recognized, not one that was recommended, but one that was recognized and they got money from them from the government. And the Christians was the one that they didn't like it because they didn't give the money, they wasn't recognized, the, the Jews didn't like it, and the Romans, especially under Nero, came up and he blamed the Christians for all that he had. All the trouble was on. Can you believe they picked one group of people to blame for everything that was wrong in the country? Who would do something like that? Hmm, well, I don't think it would be Nazi Germany, would it? <laughs> or maybe even in some ways in, in our country, people have always, we got to watch out, people do that. So this book, I don't care if you talk about those and I say this, I think it was one that the Christians in Rome that had been Jews, they could look at and would help them and show them to be faithful. Those in Jerusalem, I think, brother, it would do the same thing for them. It would show them that what they, their, their kinfolks and others whose friends was trying to get them to come back into, don't do it because Judaism is not the answer Christianity is. So no matter where the Jew was, no matter who the main people this was sent to, it was for all the Jews to realize, oh, I should say Hebrews. It was for all the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Jews, to see that Christ is better. And I, we're gonna, we won't get the whole chapter tonight because of a lot of time in the introduction, but I want to basically read a, a few verses as an intro. In Hebrews 1, oh, and by the way, who wrote the book of, uh, of Hebrews? I know a lot of people that are positive. They know who wrote it. Um, you're going to have to ask them because I'm not positive who wrote it. And if they are positive, then they have a connection I don't have because the answer is not given in this book. But we do know it was recognized by the, those inspired men of the first century as being inspired. Some say it was this one or this one or this one. I'm not even going to mention any names because I know who it was given by. It was given by God. Who wrote it down? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who, what typewriters was used to give to this Bible, but I don't, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Who was the one in control was God. Here it says God, in verse 1, chapter 1 of Hebrews, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophet. How did God speak to people? Outside of very few very few did he speak to directly. Is that right? Maybe Noah. Those Noah, you know, but the people as a whole, God didn't come down and just speak like a speaker to everybody, but he gave the message to what? Prophets. So in, there, in that, he did this. But he says, but has in these last days spoken what? Spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed heirs of some thing. Oh no, heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. He appointed him, but also through, through him also he made the world. This is an important thing to remember. It goes back to what we said in John chapter 1 that God was with God from the very, Jesus was with God from the very beginning. At the beginning, Adam didn't come before Jesus. Jesus was there before Adam. And this is what we need to realize. It says, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of of his power the word of his power he could speak he had power 
It says, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He purged, we was purged. We say, what do you mean purged? It was forgiven. It was washed away. It was redeemed. We can use a lot of different words, but it was saying that we are saved by what? By Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We are saved in the name of Christ. We are saved what? By his name, by his power. This is what that this is saying here. It says this, having become so, now this is verse four. It says, having become so much better than the angels. Having become so much what? Better than the angels. As he by an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He has an excellent name. The name, you know, we, we think of just name. But we know name, he's talking about the power. A policeman would look at someone, they're trying to leave, and they said, stop in the name of the law. The name, the law, that is Christ, his name. And notice, he says, have become so much better than the angels. People... And I'm not knocking the angels. I think this, some of the sermons we could preach on the angels would be great. Did you know that from that we saw when they talked to the women at the, at the tomb to the time that they talked to the uh, apostles of when Jesus ascended, said he's going to come back. The angels have always been so great. But what are angels? Angels are not for us to serve, but angels are to serve us. Did you hear that? It says the angel, now notice in verse five, for to which of the angels did he say, you are my sons, today I have what? Begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he said, let all of the angels of God worship what? Him. Jesus is much better. He is the angels worship Jesus. The angels is a messengers. And of the angels, he said, who made his angels spirit and his ministers a flame, a flame of fire. But to the son, he said, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is in the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, have anointed you, that's Jesus, with the oil of gladness more than your companions, the angels, more than he had, more than the angels, his companion. And, verse 10, you, Lord, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hand. They will perish, but you remain and they will all grow old like a garment like a cloak who will hold that will to, uh, fold them up and they will be changed but you but you are the same and your years will not will not fail to which of the angels has he ever said set at my right hand till i make your enemy your footstool he told jesus he did not say that to any of the angels but notice verse 14, the end of this chapter one. It says, talking about the angel, are they not, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Jesus came to save man. Angels came what? To men to what? Forth to minister for those to whom will inherit we are not here to make angels happy. 
We are not here to serve angels. Angels came down to serve God, yes, I agree, but also to serve the purpose of God in service to what? Man. How many times in the Bible? Even that time there when we see he talked to the angels, talked to the apostles after Jesus ascended. He comforted and ministered to them and said, do not weep in the likeness of you saw him go. You will see him come what? Again. Angels are the comfort. Angels are great. But Jesus is what? Better. Another word that would be used and translated in some place. He is superior to. Jesus is superior to. Angels. And one other thing that may be hard for you to believe. Jesus is superior to your will and what you want. He knows what you need. Listen to him. God be with you till we meet again.